Okay, so let's look at a new topic uh, called rational functions. And the first video, we're just going to look at a linear rational function, which basically would have some sort of linear function of x on the top, some sort of linear function of x on the bottom. Okay, you already know about one of these from GCSE maths, which is y equals 1 over x. Okay, and you probably just remembered the shape of this graph from GCSE, um, but it's got a vertical asymptote and it's also got a horizontal asymptote. Um, and every linear rational function that we're going to be looking at will have a horizontal asymptote and it will have a vertical asymptote and it will be this sort of shape. It might also be this sort of shape, which is just a rotation of the other one. Okay, um, so let's first of all think about how we're going to figure out what these asymptotes are. Okay, so 1 over x, the, the vertical asymptote is the y-axis, the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. Um, but let's just do a quick example. So if I had y equals x plus 2 divided by x minus 1, okay? And we're thinking about what does this graph look like? Like We know it's going to be a rational function, um, but first of all, let's figure out what the asymptotes would be, okay? Now, the vertical asymptote is... When we consider the, the denominator, because essentially when we're working with a rational function, it's it's a fraction, isn't it? It's something divided by something else, and obviously in maths we know that we cannot divide by zero. Right. So just look at the function and think, well, is there, is there any number that basically that I'm not allowed to sub into this function? Okay. So what would x not be allowed to take? Like what value? And hopefully we can realise that well, x, if x was equal to one, look what would happen. So if I t try to substitute 1 into this, I'd get 1 plus 2, so it'd be 3. But then I'd get 1 minus 1, I'd be dividing by 0, wouldn't I? So this line here, the vertical asymptote, the, the graph essentially never crosses. Um, it's like the one number that you're not allowed to sub into the function. And in this case, we would get our vertical asymptote at 1, because we can't sub 1 in. If you sub 1 into this, you, you, you break maths, you divide by 0. Okay. So to figure, figure out your vertical asymptote, Look at your denominator and set it equal to zero. So when would x minus one equal zero? That would be when x would equal one. Okay, so if I was going to draw this, I'll, we'll draw it later, but if I was going to draw this, the line x equals one would be where my vertical asymptote would lie. Okay. Um, we are also going to get a horizontal asymptote. Okay. Now, for this one, let's look at one that we're a bit more familiar with, so y equals 1 over x. And essentially what's going on is, as, as it approaches this horizontal asymptote, which don't forget is just this line here, as it approaches this asymptote, the x values, think about we're going, we're getting further and further along the x-axis. And a notation that you might not have seen before, but we're going to use a lot of in further maths, is we say as x tends to infinity, which basically means as x gets bigger. Now imagine if I drew this graph all the way over here. The graph that we're looking at would get closer and closer to this line. That's how an asymptote works. It's essentially a line that the graph gets closer and closer to, but it never actually touches, and it, it doesn't cross either. Okay, so what, let's think about why that happens. Okay, so as x tends to infinity, this line that we're getting closer to would be y would be tending to zero. And the line itself, the actual asymptote, we would say would be the line y equals zero. Okay, um, without getting bogged down in, in the actual representation of the graph, let's just think about it. Like, if x was equal to 100, y would equal 1 over 100, which would be 0 0.01, which essentially is what's saying is for this graph, as x gets larger, y gets smaller. You know, imagine if x was equal to 1,000, y would equal 1 divided by 1,000, which would obviously be as x is getting bigger, the y value is getting smaller. Okay? 
Um, so, with that in mind, like whenever we're thinking about the horizontal asymptote, we've got to think about what happens as x gets larger. Okay, so as x gets bigger, where does our graph approach? Okay, and the way, I mean, one way of doing it is actually just subbing like a large number for x. So think about for this example that we're looking at. If x was equal to a thousand, y would equal one thousand plus two divided by one thousand minus one, which would give us one point zero zero three zero zero. Um, what about if x was equal to a million? So think about what happens as x is getting larger. What's going to happen to this function? Can we see that the y values are getting closer and closer to 1? You never actually get to 1, and that's why we get this asymptote. It's like a line that the graph gets closer to, but it never touches. Um, but as x gets bigger and bigger, the y value approach 1. Okay. Now, we don't in the exam, we don't really want to be subbing in a 1,000 and a million and seeing what it's getting closer to. But you need to bear in mind that the horizontal asymptote is that happens when x gets larger. So as the graph goes this way, that's when the x values are getting bigger. I should say as well, when it goes that way, that's when the graph approaches minus infinity. So you could sub in like minus a million if you wanted to, but you get the same answer, because the minus divided by the minus would still approach a positive. Okay. Well, actually it wouldn't be exactly the same answer, because it approaches it from underneath. This one approaches it from above. But it'd still be getting closer to 1. Okay. So hopefully we're happy that this happens for large x values. Now, probably the quickest way of thinking about it is just do a capital, like if x is really big, if you've got like a really big number and you add 2 to it, it doesn't change it, does it really? It makes it like a very negligible difference. If you've got a really big number and you take away 1, the, these constants have no impact when x gets large, or very little impact. So we can ignore those. And what's a big value divided by a big value? We can see that it approaches 1. So I could say, well, my asymptote would be y equals 1. Okay? Um, just bear in mind that, essentially, these constants are not going to impact for large x values. And we can just cancel down and see what we're left with. I'm going to show you another way to set it out as well, which is a bit more mathematically rigorous, which we might need to do in the exam when we do some more questions on this topic. So just give me one sec. Okay, so the best way to set this out for your horizontal, say, well, as x tends to infinity, Look at your fraction, your original fraction. Divide everything by x. So if we divide the top and the bottom by x, x divided by x is 1. 2 divided by x. x divided by x is 1. And minus 1 divided by x. And the best way, like, so the most technically correct for the exam, the best way to set it out is to say, as x tends towards infinity, 2 divided by x tends to 0. Minus 1 divided by x tends to 0. So just think about that for a second, right? As x gets bigger, if you do 2 divided by something really big, it's going to get really small. So both of these terms would tend towards 0, and that's why we can forget about them. So what we're left with 1 divided by 1. So we still get the same answer, y equals 1. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so let's look at example 2b from the booklet, um, and we're just going to find the horizontal and vertical asymptote. So we've got y equals 3 minus 2x divided by x minus 2. Okay, so vertical, dead easy. Remember, we can't divide by 0. So if x minus 2 equals 0, that would be when x equals 2. Horizontal, 
takes a bit more getting used to but once you've done a few it's not too bad we can say lat as x tends to infinity as x gets really large and we've got i'm going to use the big x notation okay so we've got minus two times by a big number and this three the constant would have no impact like it would, as x get really big, like if you took two off, if you added three on, it wouldn't change it. So what we're left with is minus two times a big number divided by a big number. So y would equal minus two. Okay, the other way to set it out as well, which you need to know in terms of the exam style, divide everything by x. And then say, as x tends to infinity, 3 divided by something really big, that's going to get smaller. Minus 2 divided by something really big. So 3 over x would tend to 0. Minus 2 over x would tend to 0. So we're left with, if both of those terms tend to 0, y would equal minus 2 divided by 1. So that tells me our vertical asymptote would be y equals minus 2. Okay. Let's do one more. Okay, so we've got y equals 1 plus 3 over x minus 2. Not the standard form, but you can get questions like this in the exam. So we've got two separate terms. Now you, if you want to, you could combine it into a single fraction. But let's think about it if we leave them separately. I might, I'll show you how to combine them after we've done this. So remember the vertical. Just look at your denominator. Think about this whole function. We can't divide by zero. So we can't let x minus 2 equal zero. In other words, when x equals 2, that's the line that essentially our graph's not going to cross because we can't sub 2 in. That's when essentially we, we, we approach infinity when we try and sub 2 in because we divide by zero. Okay, horizontal. A lot of people make mistakes with this question because they forget about this one. Okay, that one is, is not going anywhere, just leave it where it is, and then think about this fraction. Okay, so if we use the dividing by x technique, 3 over x, 1 minus 2 over x. Divide everything in your fraction by x, and then say as x tends to infinity, 3 over x tends to 0 minus 2 over x tends to zero so let's see what we've got we've got one plus that there is going to tend towards zero so you've got zero divided by one minus zero so that actually because we've got zero divided by something would just be equal to one plus zero which is 1. Remember, if you do 0 divided by anything, the answer is 0, isn't it? So the actual value left of is y equals 1. Okay. So just be careful with that. It throws people off. If you, if you end up with like a single fraction and there's just an x on the top, uh, sorry, just a constant on top, if you divide that by x, if that term tends to 0, this whole thing becomes 0. Okay. Just one more thing. You could, if you want to, if you wanted to write it as a single fraction in this form, if you want to combine these together, we need to get a common denominator. So because that's 3 over x minus 2, thinking about this, before we can group them together into a single fraction, we can think about 1 as x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, because that's the same as 1, isn't it? And if we write it like this, we can then add these fractions together. And remember, when you've got a common denominator, the way fractions work is you just add the tops. So that'll be x minus 2 plus 3, so then that'll give us x plus 1. So you could write it as a single fraction, and then you'll see where your vertical would be x equals 2, horizontal. Think about y is equal to, divide everything by x. So 1 plus 1 over x. 1 minus 2 over x. Both of those disappear because they tend to zero, so y would equal one. 
which is the same answer, but just a slightly different way of getting there. Alright, thanks guys.